Yo, we lost saying it's your boy, your boy here, and welcome to the F1 2016 Russian Grand Prix review for you guys. And uh, yeah, let's get right into this video today. So, right off the bat, we had a lot of drivers going off in practice in turn 13, particularly in P3, with the likes of Perez, two Mercedes, I think Vettel as well, and the two Williams as well. Uh, very, very tricky that corner, especially as it has a corner before, just seconds after the corner, so as you're coming out of that little curve, you'll immediately arrive with this heavy braking zone going into turn 13 and I wasn't surprised that a lot of people did come a cropper to that corner because it is very tricky to master. Hell, I've even had a couple of uh, problems uh, going into that corner myself, so yes, yeah, it can catch the best of us out including uh, today's best of us out as well and the likes of Rosberg and Hamilton so yeah but nonetheless as soon as we got into qualifying no real issues around turn 13 were addressed and uh, as a result uh, qualifying got underway in very very calm fashion nobody really making a lot of mistakes no dramas happening so far particularly uh, in Q1 with the with like the likes of Manon and all that kind of shit so yeah but there was one in particular, and that was Hamilton, who got a reprimand for going off the track and not uh, going through this little zone that the FIA have made so that uh, drivers don't uh, cut the track and gain an advantage, which is kind of bullshit, to be honest, because uh, they could have immediately said, like, oh, if you come off the circuit, then you've got to make sure that you don't go fastest in a particular sector that you're on. So, I don't know, that rule of having like this little zone that they have to go around is kind of bullshit to be honest. All to like, uh, make sure that the, uh, that the driver doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, gain a lot of time, in fact loses a lot of time, so, uh, but like I say, it's just bullshit at the end of the day, I mean, just if, if you want to impose the rule, just like, tell them to like, if they do it, to slow down at, at, their, at a certain sector so they don't go fastest on that sector so that they don't gain an advantage, so yeah. So the drivers who were out at the end of the session were Jolie and Palmer, uh, Felipe Nazia, Pascal Verlai, Rio Harianza and Marcus Eriksson. Unfortunate for uh, Jolie and Palmer, you know, especially as he's been rumoured to uh, be dropped halfway through the season by drivers such as Stefa uh, uh, Sorge Sorokin and uh, Esteban Ocon, which is kind of disappointing, especially as I've got high hopes for Jody, and you know, he, he was GP, he's GP2 champion, he's one of the quickest Brits out there on the field, like he is the real deal, and the fact that he is uh, getting pressured to perform well, otherwise he will get dropped in the, uh, well, there could be a possibility of him getting dropped uh, halfway through the season, is quite uh, baffling for him, especially as he as he uh, has just got into F1 and is trying to uh, make it big in F1. So, yeah, unfortunate for him, but hopefully more good things will come out of him so that this whole, like, conversation of him maybe leaving Renault is uh, put to side. And then as we go into Q2, nothing really much happened to be honest, uh, usual qualifying things happened. So really pretty much at the end of the session it was Carlos Sainz in 11th, Jensen Button unfortunate, they were predicting a top 10 uh, qualifying finish, but unfortunately it was 12th for Button. Uh, Hulkenberg 13th, Fernando Alonso 14th, unfortunate both McLarens like I said outside the top 10. They're predicting a Q3 appearance, but unfortunately that's not the case. So, yeah, Roman Groshen, Esteban Gutierrez, 15th and 16th, unfortunate for the Haas cars, especially with the with the season that they've had so far. The fact that they are 15th and 16th is uh, a bit unfortunate. And then finally, of course, Kevin Magnussen in the Renault in 17th. And then as we go into Q3, the last part of the session, Drama, major drama, and that was for Lewis Hamilton, who uh, was told by the team that he had an NGU cage problem, which was a power unit problem, which meant that he could not compete in Q3, which meant that he would be starting in 10th place. A horrible, horrible finish to qualify for Lewis Hamilton, especially after the troubles that he had in China. The fact that he's getting hit with those again is hugely frustrating for the Brit. You know, I mean, what does he have to do to beat Rosberg? Like, literally, Rosberg is having the most luckiest start to the season in human history. And the fact that Lewis is not, 
is painfully annoying. You know, I feel for Lewis so much, man, because he's literally had everything thrown at him to uh, prevent him from beating Rosberg, which is hugely frustrating. So, I don't know, man. I mean, I was literally pissed off hard, but I knew at the end of the day there was still a race to be done. So, I knew Hamilton's got a chance, a little bit of a slim chance to do it. So, yeah. But nonetheless, Q3 went on without him, and uh, there was uh, a lot of their uh, drivers put in some quick times, particularly with Nico Rosberg. He was just the dominant force throughout the session, and as a result, the pole position by about eight tenths, I believe it was. So a very, very comfortable pole position by Nico Rosberg. We all knew he was going to get pole position due to the pace that Mercedes over the rest of the field. The only real challenge I felt was going to come to the Mercedes was the Ferraris, but the Ferraris were really up to par with uh, the Mercedes in terms of pace, so as a result, the Mercedes just walked through to pole position uh, via Nico Rosberg. Second was uh, was supposed to be Sebastian Vettel, but he had a gearbox penalty, which meant that he would drop from second to sixth, which is a bit unfortunate, but that's the way the cookie crumbles, so yeah. Um, th uh, second would then be uh, Bottas, uh, good, uh, good lap by him. Third would be Kimi Raikkonen. Good lap by him as well. Uh, fourth was um, Massa. Good lap by him as well. Ricardo fifth. Uh, Vettel sixth. Perez seventh. Kvyat eighth. Ninth was Verstappen, and of course tenth was Lewis Hamilton, who did not set a time because of that MGOKH problem. So as we got into the race, it was a good start from Nico Rosberg, who pulled away from the rest of the field. But behind, there was a big, big scratch going on into turn uh, two and three, uh, particularly with Danny Kvyat and Sebastian Vettel. Uh, Danny Kvyat just running into the back of uh, Sebastian Vettel. Sebastian passed Danny to move up into fifth place. He ran into the back once, and then uh, as soon as they came up to turn three, he did it again. But this time, as uh, Vettel had a puncture via Kvyat's little incident, he uh, tapped. Uh, Vettel on the back of the uh, car, on the uh, back of the rear wing, and uh, set him flying into the wall, and that would be the end of Vettel's race. Very, very high drama going on for Vettel there. Vettel really annoyed and frustrated with uh, Kvyat's uh, little moves that he did on uh, himself, going into uh, 1, 2, and 3. So, yeah, I don't know what uh, what Kvyat was thinking. Uh, I, don't, I think, honestly, it was... I think it was honestly Kvyat's walk to be honest with me. What was he thinking to be honest? Like, he was passed and then all of a sudden just didn't care about uh, the braking towards turn two and just ran into the back of Vettel very, very carelessly. And then afterwards, you know, just ran into the back carelessly as well on Vettel and then spun him around and put him into uh, the wall in turn three. So, I don't know, man. I mean, Kvyat could be the next past Maldonado, but that was just absolutely stupid and absolutely careless from uh, Kvyat's side to uh, do that to Vettel, so... Oh, I'm out! Crash! Somebody hit me in the rear, turn two, and then somebody hit me in the rear again in turn three, for sake! Honestly, what the f*** are we doing? Then further back, we also had a couple of incidents going on in the background with uh, the likes of... Um, Grosjean, I believe it was uh, Hulkenberg, yep, and uh, Ericsson as well, uh, have both, all of them having like sort of an argy bargy moment, and as a result, Hulkenberg coming out the worst, and as a result, uh, retiring from the race. I didn't really get a clear understanding, like, to how it happened, because it was a while back, but from my sense, it looked like it was a case of argy bargy going into turn two. So, yeah. And then as a result, that uh, led to uh, Hamilton being in fifth place, which was so damn awesome. Finally, Lewis does not have to endure the one lap mishaps that he's been uh, facing in the last uh, few races. So that was awesome to see. And then as a result of all the incidents that went on, there was even a puncher for Sergio Perez as well. Uh, the safety car was called out for a couple of laps, but then afterwards it was uh, pulled back in and we got some racing back going again. Uh, Rosberg leading the way, uh, very, very comfortably. He actually pulled like a, a 10 second, a 10 to 12 second lead at uh, one point. So yeah, um, Hamilton behind, chasing after 
uh, Massa, who he dispatched quite easily on the restart, and then afterwards, right on the attack of Raikkonen, who uh, let him through easily. Uh, Raikkonen said that he knew he was coming, he just let him through easily, which is fair enough, you know. Uh, Hamilton is fighting for this championship, he wants to go for the championship, so let him be, let him uh, do his race, so yeah, don't uh, be a dick and uh, block him too much, hold him up too much. But the one guy who did, and actually proper bit of a fight, was uh, Valtteri Bottas, who very, very sensibly just put his car in the right place, and as a result made it really, really difficult for Hamilton to get by. So much so that Hamilton actually had to uh, do an overcut on uh, Valtteri Bottas, because Bottas pitted a lap earlier than uh, Hamilton did, because Hamilton pitted a lap after, so Bottas, as a result, was on the undercut. But as Hamilton came out of the pits, and Bottas coming down the straight, Hamilton came up just behind Bottas and uh, as a result almost passed Bottas but still couldn't do it but afterwards a lap later he actually finally get, got ahead of Bottas with uh, some superior straight line performance and with the new tyres as well. Managed to get past Bottas going into turn to a very very clean pass of course very very clean indeed so as a result he would be up to second finally on the attack and on the chase for Nico Rosberg who was about 13 seconds up the road. So then shortly after Raikkonen did the same thing, he uh, pitted a couple laps after Hamilton and Bottas and as he came out almost past Bottas but in the end didn't but then uh, a few laps later he actually did I think it was the same place as Hamilton so a very very good move and as a result pulled very very clear away from uh, Bottas and uh, really was just in a comfortable third pretty much he held on to that for the entire race so yeah same with Bottas as well with uh, holding on to fourth and then afterwards we saw some really good racing going on in the mid pack particularly with the likes of Toro Rosso, uh, Perez, the two Salvas, even the two Renaults as well and the two McLarens uh, not to mention as well and the Hasses as well as well so yeah, it was a really, really good fight. Um, a lot of battles going on. Oh, by the way, as well, uh, Science got a five second, a ten second uh, penalty for pushing Palmer out uh, off the race circuit. He actually, uh, he was trying to make a move on Palmer, which he did, going around the outside of turn two. And as he was coming out of turn two, pushed Palmer on to the outside of the track and almost into the wall which meant that uh, Sainz, uh, as a result of his uh, dirty antics, got a 10-second uh, penalty, which would pay, uh, play a big factor in the uh, race uh, later on, which I'll talk more later on, so yeah. Also, talking about the two Red Bulls, they have really had a really disappointing day. Ricardo finished up in 11th, and Kvyat finishing up in 15th. Very, very, very disappointing for the two Red Bulls. Uh, it started off in a bad way, getting Vettel heated at the start, and then all, and then pretty much all throughout the race have been struggling. Particularly with Kvyat uh, when he changed tyres on lap two, really struggling with that rear and struggling to get some pace down. Same with Ricardo as well, even though he was quite strong in the end. The fact that both Red Bulls are out of the point, uh, especially coming off a very very decent and very strong Chinese Grand Prix last time out, was very very disappointing and. We'll be looking to bounce back from this going into Spain, so yeah. Also talking about the Red Bull boys, uh, the Toro Rosso of Max Verstappen had a problem. Uh, I don't know what problem it was, but uh, he had to retire from the race. Unfortunate for Max Verstappen. He had a really, really strong race. He was running up in seventh for the most of the race. So the fact that he retired just like that was very, very unfortunate. He was uh, on par to get maybe a sixth place in the race, which was which would be a massive result for him, especially uh, with the season that he's having and the attention that he's been getting all throughout uh, his time in F1. The fact that he got a retirement in that race is quite unfortunate, but that's racing. These things can happen, so hopefully he can bounce back and uh, produce a solid result in uh, Spain next time out. So but then at the front, we saw a really good fight for uh, between Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg for the lead of the race. Uh, Lewis Hamilton chasing after Nico Rosberg quite hard. He actually got to the point that the gap was actually down to almost five seconds, which was insane. But as it got to that point, uh, the team told Lewis that he had a problem, a water leak problem, which would have to back off and lose excessive amount of time. 
at that point I was quite annoyed and quite frustrated because of the way that Hamilton's been denied of a win, denied of beating Rosberg. You know, he was so close and as a result and and all of a sudden he gets that problem. So it's just I don't know what to say. His luck is unreal. His luck is unreal, man. I, I don't even know what to, to I don't even know what to say to be honest because this is just bullshit. This is absolutely bullshit because he had done so well. He he was on he was on task to actually close the gap, get right onto the back of Nico Rosberg and actually have a shot of winning the race. And the fact that he didn't because of that stupid fucked up fucked up problem is bullshit. So yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm not going to quit. I don't know in terms of what Mercedes are thinking, to be honest. I mean, I'm not going to question their motives, to be honest, because I don't think the team would do something like that on purpose. Let's be real here. I don't think the team would do anything like this on purpose because at the end of the day, this boy has delivered them two Drivers World titles. So I would doubt they would do it, to be honest. They've been Hamilton's friend for a long time. I doubt they would do something ridiculous as that. And uh, actually, there was uh, something that interesting came up. Uh, a lot of the people after the Russia qualifying, uh, see uh, the qualifying controversy, actually were blaming Mercedes for sabotaging Hamilton's uh, luck, which is totally fucked up and totally bullshit. Because you know, I don't, I doubt Mercedes would do something like that. To be honest, because you know. Hamilton has been a good friend, he's been a loyal friend to Mercedes, he's been with them uh, since 2013 and in that year they were having a really tough season as well. So the fact that they he was with him on that year and then afterwards, you know, he was he got he, he got his break for uh, trying to go for a championship in 2014 and 2015. He won both championships with them and he was the darling of Mercedes and the fact now that people are suggesting after Russia that he has uh, been given a bad car by Mercedes on purpose is kind of fucked up and bullshit and uh, actually Toto actually went out and said they are lunatics so <laughs> yeah I mean Jesus man savage Really, really savage from Tyre Wolf there, so yeah. Are fans going to think there's a conspiracy against Lewis Hamilton's side of the garage? This was a one-off, it wouldn't be suspect, but there's clearly sabotage to Lewis Hamilton. I really believe Mercedes is cheating its own champion and the fans, I just don't trust them. There's something fundamentally wrong on Lewis Hamilton's side of the garage. First of all, let me tell you that I'm not going to respond to every l lunatic who uh, uh, sends a Twitter message. Okay. Shots fired! Shots fired! That's why I fuck your bitch, you fat motherfucker. Westside, bad boy killers. You know, you know who the realest is, niggas. We bring it to <laughs> First off, fuck your bitch in the click you claim. But nonetheless, that meant that Nico Rosberg was able to drive away from Lewis Hamilton and actually pull a lead of, to about 13, 14 seconds. And actually, almost at the end of the race, at the latter part of the race, Raikkonen was closing in on Hamilton actually. He was like pulling like five, six tenths per lap on Hamilton. But really at the end, Hamilton had uh, Raikkonen on uh, guard, which meant that Nick Rosberg in the end of the race took the victory. A very, very comfortable victory over Lewis Hamilton second. Third was uh, Kimi Raikkonen, a good drive by him. That meant, uh, especially as it was Ferrari's 700th uh, Grand Prix podium, which was insane. Really, really insane. What an achievement by Ferrari. 700 podiums. That is awesome. Uh, behind was Bottas in fourth. Unfortunate. Could have easily got a podium, but uh, his pace in the uh, mid part of the race really wasn't uh, up to par with the likes of Hamilton and Raikkonen. So, yeah, unfortunate for him. Fifth was Massa. He actually went on the uh, options at the end of the race. Uh, so, yeah, that was a good drive by him. Six was Alonso, great drive by him. I think his best of the season since uh, Hungary last year, which was awesome. Seventh was, I believe it was um, Hulkenberg, good drive, no, Perez, good drive by him. Eighth was for Staffan, I believe it was, yeah, good drive by him. Ninth was, uh, I think ninth was Palmer, no, Magnussen actually. So great drive by him. Points from uh, Rinna, which was awesome. And 10th was Jensen Button, and I was immediately happy by this because, 
You know, Jensen's been having a rough start to the season. He, you know, he hasn't been up to the par with Alonso and Van Dor. And the fact now that he's got a point is awesome. Even though he didn't beat Alonso, it's still nice to see him in the points. So, so that has been the Russian Grand Prix, the 2016 Russian Grand Prix race. It was awesome. It was fantastic. Um, right at the end, I forgot to mention Hamilton on the podium, quite annoyed at Rosberg afterwards. So, yeah, of course, Hamilton uh, will, will be wanting revenge going into Spain. But nonetheless, Rosberg... Very, very comfortably taking the victory, comfortably, just absolutely just dominating the season so far. But can Hamilton mount a challenge going into the European season? How could this happen to me? I made my mistakes. Got no <laughs> Deal with it. So that has been this race for you guys, that's been this review for you guys as well. It has been really, really awesome, it was a great, great race. I would give that a solid 7.5 out of 10. Wasn't quite as good as China or Bahrain, but still was fantastic to watch nonetheless. So uh, yeah, so uh, that's it for you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then hit that like button below. Comment below what you thought about the race, was it enjoyable, was it fun, was it sick? Comment below and subscribe for new and I'll see you guys next time. It's your boy, it's your boy. I am out. Peace.